Hello everyone, uh, Engage UK back again, uh, this time with a little how-to, and today I'm going to look at um, back-to-backs. Um, for those who aren't familiar with this, this is the distance between the back of the wheels in uh, any scale model railway. The reason this is important is because if you've got running problems on your railway, in particular through point work, uh, with things being derailed or uh, lifting off the track. And the first thing that you're going to suspect is a problem is the back-to-back -back measurement on the wheels. Now, you can check this yourself. It's not that technical. Um, get yourself a little back-to-back -back gauge. This is an en Engage Society one. Backman Farish, this one. Uh, so obviously uh, suited to uh, Backman Farish or mostly BR. Uh, 1 to 148 scale. Uh, the standards can be a little bit tricky on this because of the different uh, various size scales in uh, different N-gauge uh, areas of the world. 160, uh, you've got 150 to 1, you've got a fine scale 2mm and you've got 148 to 1 but they're generally agreed to be in Britain at least uh, 7.2 millimetres yeah, in coarse scale, uh, 7.54 in fine scale. So what are you going to do? Well, for instance, I recently got hold of a whole box of Farish wagons here. And do, here's, for instance, is a nice little 16 tonne mineral wagon. Um, before I pop that on the track and see it run around, what I would do is just check the back-to-backs and by that what we're going to do is we're going to look at the distance between the backs of these wheels. Now obviously um, we're dealing here with what are pretty modern wheel sets although they are quite wide. On older uh, models these flanges can be quite deep, uh, the, the thickness of the wheel rims itself can be different so you always have to allow for a little bit of adjustment uh, to the regulations depending on how old your stock is, what kind of wheels you've got on it. Obviously you could rewheel these with uh, modern wheels if they're the old type that you don't want on your uh, layout anymore to, to standardise everything. And Farish do sell the wagon wheels in packs of tens for these to be changed. I would also recommend if you've got any old Pico wagons which have plastic wheels that uh, you just swap them out for metal wheels, you get much better running and have less problems with dirt on your track as well. So looking at this one, I'm immediate, immediately looking at that, I, I'm thinking, I think you can probably see it on the camera, that that top set of wheels looks a little bit closer than the, that bottom set. So one or either of these could be out and it's pretty simple and easy to check. Get yourself a little gauge back here. Tricky little job. That's what it looks like. There are other various types of other gauges available. You can do this with digital calipers. If they're small enough for instance um, and that does allow you to make some minor adjustments um, to the depths and distances there. Here's what the end gauge size one looks like. The reason there is a groove in the centre, that's for a, um, a gear set to drop in. And all this is, is this is milled to the distance between the wheels. So you simply slip the axle into that groove uh, and you'll find out immediately if it won't slip over that it's a little bit too short. If it's loose, they're a little bit too far apart and you can push them back in a little bit. So let's pop a wheel set out of this and just check it. Right, so I pop that um, suspect wheel set out. It might be this one that's wrong. This one could be correct. This could be too wide. We don't know. That's what the beauty of the gauge is. And now, while I've got a bit of 2mm fine scale track here, while that would probably run quite happily, even on the 2mm fine scale track, because of the width of the wheels, Coming into point work, we've got much smaller gaps. You've got to go through the check rails, you've got to go past the frog. 
you could have you could have some quite uh, serious problems there, and you could uh, get derailments, uh, slop things moving around. And remember, you, this also applies to things that uh, pick up current, locomo locomotive driving wheels, or wheels that pick up current for lighting for coaches and things like that. Uh, and this can affect your running. You're going to get much smoother, better running if you get your back-to-backs correct. So let's put this on the gauge. Yeah, and you can, immediately we can see that's a little tight. It's not going over. And to adjust it, we can simply turning it as I feed it down into the gauge. So I'm turning the wheels, rotating them, and coaxing them in. This is, this is pushing the wheels further apart, closer to the correct spacing. And there we are. Now that's slipped in. It's all the way in, just about. And it, it's still firm, it's still quite tight, but it has moved them apart to the correct distance. If this was too wide, obviously that would, that would move around and we could take them out. These wheels can be adjusted on or off by rotating. Yep, yeah, happy with that. Now pop that back out of the cage and it shouldn't be easy to come back out. It should be a little bit stiff, but oh. <laughs> caught it, luckily. Uh, that's back out. We can now double check it. Obviously, turn it as you do it. You don't just want to be pushing it from one side and um, you've got to keep these wheels square. Yep, that's gone over nicely now the second time. So that, that I'm happy with. So I could pop that back in. We might as well check the other set while we've got this wagon out. So we'll do that. So I've popped the set I've just adjusted back in. I've got the second set out. I'm just checking those. Yeah, these look to be pretty good. They've gone straight in. They're not slopping around, so... Yeah, I think I'm happy with that wheel set. If I needed to, I could uh, close them up by pushing them... Sorry, you can see that. <laughs> by pushing them together slightly. So I've just tightened them up a little bit. Yeah. yeah that looks good. Okay, so I would now put that set back in and I say that wagon's done. Obviously still check it, run it through some point work, run it through on a piece of track just to check you're happy because although this is the recommended size, as I say, it can depend on the, what, how old your wheel sets are, how thick the flanges are. These are of course the flanges, these projections that sit inside the rails to stop the, stop the uh, wheel set coming off. those back in. Okay that's both wheel sets done and I've popped it now on a piece of um, code 55 Pico track because obviously this is correct 9mm gauge this 2mm fine scale is slightly wider than 9mm. Um, you don't expect it when you've got the back to backs correct that it's going to be totally tight on things like straight track and curved track. You are still going to have here probably see a little bit of give. The wheels are slightly, the back to backs, the, the flat, the flanges of the wheels are slightly inside the inside of the rails there. Um, it's really through the points, uh, the, through the check rails, through the V's of the frogs and things like that, that um, you're going to really see the benefit of doing this. So one down, about 30 to go. <laughs> um, but it, as I say, it, it took a couple of minutes, if that, to do that. Um, you don't have to do it and, unless and until you notice some problems, but I just think it's good practice to check things like this, especially with second-hand uh, goods you might buy, second-hand wagons, second-hand locomotives, to check these back-to-backs um, just so you know you're going to get really nice smooth running. And the other thing, of course, is you won't, you're not just going to get better electrical pickup. It is going to be smoother running. You're going to be less bumping around, less rocking from side to side through the point work. Uh, this applies of course to any scales, it's not just a, a thing for N scales, so there's any double O or HO modelers out there, occasionally watch these videos, uh, this applies to you and again the back-to-back -back gauges are available in all the different scales. 
So thanks for watching the video and I hope it's been uh, helpful. I uh, hope to be back soon with more videos. Please comment, rate and subscribe. Or leave me any requests or suggestions. I uh, hope to be back soon as I say with more. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you soon.